Right now, I'm sorry if there's a little bit of glare on the camera, it's just the way the light is today. Uh, but normally, on a stock system with a stock blower, you've got a three position fan. Now when it's in position three, the motor is actually running flat out, it's getting full 12 volts. The only thing that dictates the other two speeds on one and two is there are two resistors put in the circuit and they, they uh, reduce the power sufficiently to uh, reduce the speed of the actual motor. And uh, when you fit the motor controller, the switch would actually go straight through here. You just take, take this fascia panel off, pull these off obviously, and uh, you'll find that the switch itself is just clipped in behind here. You can lift that out, unclip it, strip the switch apart, and just so you just leave a hole to screw through the new controller, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, and, and that's it really. So why switch to a pulse switch modu modulation? Well, uh, there's a couple of reasons. Uh, <laughs> one, it's cheaper. Um, and I wouldn't do this if you're not actually replacing the fan. If you're going to take the fan out and take out all this dash, um, you might as well upgrade it. Um, the resistors, of course, get quite hot. Um, and, uh, you know, it's not unheard of for it to melt because most of them are mounted either to the side of or inside the plastic casing where the fan housing is. And it can actually melt the plastic and they get quite hot. It's a very inefficient way of... Um, you're just simply wasting power really by using the resistors whereas if you use a motor controller it's much more efficient so uh, let's say for instance flat out it's using about 12 volts when you've got half speed the average is going to be about 6 volts something like that so you're not going to be using quite as much current voltage um, and that's it really so essentially all you do is bypass the resistor circuit and the, and the heavy duty relay because when you go to full flat out speed there's quite, a, there's quite a bit of current passing through then. So what Volkswagen did was fitted a heavy duty relay, relay so when it's on full speed it switches through the relay. Um, and that's it really. So you can, you, can, you can bypass the relay, you can bypass the resistors and fit them in motor controller. And uh, wiring up the blower to the motor controller is fairly straightforward. Right, this is the blower motor connected to a PWM or pulse width modulation controller. Um, <clears throat> on the stock system where you've got um, resistors, they're basically just soaking up the power, but the but a PWM controller is far more efficient. Now, because some of these Chinese controllers are not always, you know, um, uh, what's the word for it? Um, they're not exactly that clear to see which terminals go where, but uh, on this particular one, the fan motor goes to these two terminals, the marked plus and minus. And uh, if you look at those symbols, you see the Chinese symbols? And you look at the symbols for the battery, it's the second symbol that sort of gives it away. But otherwise the plus and minus are pretty much the same. Um, right, now if I connect, that's this terminal here. I'm just going to connect that up to a battery and that's all it requires, just a 12 volt feed and earth. So the earth in actual fact could be the chassis uh, rather than you know run to an earth you know to the earth crane just just find a suitable place on the chassis to ground that out and um, but the motor needs to go directly to the controller so these two wires here go directly onto this side here and this is the controller, just to give you an idea. And you'll notice there's a little, uh, a little indicator that comes on the uh, circuit board. And to my mind, it may well be worth extending that LED and taking it up onto your dashboard, or at the very least, make sure that your blower only comes on when you're in the ignition only position. To be honest, I've never used my blower when I've been parked, so uh, that's entirely up to you. <clears throat> but if you if you wire it so it's only live when the ignition is on, if you've got your fan on a low speed, you won't forget that you've left it on. But anyway, we're on a low speed at the moment. I'll turn this motor on its side because otherwise, literally, it will blast. I'm just working my way through it. And that's it. It's running flat out. 
and any point in between. Right down to there. And on this one I can actually click off to switch the fan off. But that's the basic wiring for the um, fan motor. The only difficulty you might have is determining which is the positive and the minus on here. I've actually marked it on in marker pen, but it's easy enough to tell. It doesn't matter which way you brand, you test it on the battery, but you'll find that if you've got it connected one way, it certainly kinks out a lot of air and it's going the correct way, it'll be obvious. If you wire it the other way, you'll get very little air out of it and it'll run a lot slower. So that's how to determine the right way to connect that. Uh, and that's it really, it's just those terminals. There is a, in this particular one, there's a switch in there I think for uh, reversing the motor, but I can't really, unless you cook a lot of bacon in your camper, I can't really see much point in that. Um, and the nice thing about having this as a separate on a fly lead, the actual control, is that you can therefore put it back through where the existing fan controller switch was. And all you've got to do really is cannibalise the switch Gut, gut the insides of it and so you've just got a hole to be able to push this through, screw the nut on because of course the knob pulls off like that and there's a little nut there to screw it through the hole and put your knob back on again. They are infinite control, more efficient and works out cheaper than the resistors. Hope that helps.